Hello, everybody. This is the Shades Podcast, and I cannot l- express to you how excited I am to speak on this topic. And I know my two dear friends here are also even more excited because this topic it hits home. It really does hit home for me, as you can tell by the title of this message. We will be talking about marriage, but unfortunately, in this day and age, all the craziness, even marriage is looked down upon. Mm-hmm. An institution and a practice that has been practiced for over a millennium, from the dawn of age, now it's settling to be looked down upon. Of course, with critiques that are respectable, kind of. But before we engage into the arguments that are being presented to people who want to have a committed marriage, I want to go ahead and move it on to Kyler. Kyler, the question is. How are you feeling about all of this? Does it make you upset, sad? Just let me know. How are you feeling? Let the viewers know. Well, hello everyone. Um, so, my thoughts on this whole thing about marriage is that it's sad to see nowadays this generation um, they don't want marriage anymore. Um, unfortunately, it's a sad thing. I talk to a lot of uh, different, you know, people, especially different girls, you know, my age, and I ask um, questions, you know, of them, hey, do you want to be married? And a majority of them, they don't have a desire to be married. A lot of them are satisfied with just sleeping around. Um, They're satisfied with being a a baby mother. Um, Mm. They're satisfied with being a one night stand, having multiple men, um, multiple partners. They're, They're just all right with that. They're not okay with settling down quote unquote ahead i don't even like the terminology <laughs> but they don't mind they don't want that aspect of being a woman they don't believe in the traditional values anymore of being married mm-hmm. so it makes you feel quite sad for them say hey y'all guys are missing out yeah absolutely frame how are you feeling about this bro um <clears throat> i think that um, since people aren't wanting to get married nowadays, it's very upsetting because that's something that I would want to do later in life. Of course, I would want to, you know, commit to, you know, um, me and the girl would want to commit to each other and, you know, live happily ever after, you know, form, same, same formulated, uh, kids and stuff. And, um, it's just really sad that people would rather, you know, chase materialistic things, chase the, you know, sleeping around, chasing multiple men rather than just, you know, committing to one person and, you know, getting closer to God together. Yeah, um, 100%. Now, I want to express how I feel pretty quickly. I am upset. Um, quite, uh, yeah, I'm very upset that I have been brought into, raised in a culture where everything is critiqued because there is a shade upon over people's eyes that they are looking through and that it is steers them away from looking in the light that is what i am upset about and of course there are lots of arguments that we will get into but i am just upset that people truly think that an institution that was designed by god of which we will get to shortly and present our case on why that is so shouldn't be participated in because it is better to participate in other meaningless activities such as what you both have stated meaningless sex Mm. So, because of that, habitation. Exactly. 100%. Because of that, we're going to go ahead and give you our case. We're just simply going to talk amongst ourselves on why marriage is a religious institution. Kyler, I want you to go ahead and start this one off. Why is marriage a religious institution? Well, first off, marriage is God's idea. So, from the beginning, God created marriage. And if we want to go into um scripture we can go into the very beginning because like he said earlier marriage has been here since the beginning and you know the beginning is all in genesis so that's the first book of the bible um chapter 2 verse 18 says the lord god said it is not good for the man to be alone i will make a helper suitable for him okay and so then of course as we go down into the story um at adam starts naming the animals and all this and adam realizes that there's no um suitable helper for him he sees that there's animals for each person but no one for him so um after naming the animals um the lord allowed adam to fall into a deep sleep this is verse 21 um he falls into a deep sleep and um 
while he's sleeping, God takes one of his ribs, um, closes it up, um, and then Adam wakes up from deep sleep. God has already made the woman from the rib um, he took out of Adam. And then the man said in verse 23, this is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. You see, that's what Adam looked at Eve and he was like, whoa, man. <laughs> and that's mm. how she got the name woman because I, like I want you guys to know that women are God's greatest creation. That is God's greatest creation is a woman. God took his time when he created a woman. The Bible says that God made man from the dust, but with Eve, <laughs> with the woman, he, he formed and fashioned her. Women, you guys are excellent. You guys are God's gifts to us. And then it says here that um, by this, it says that man shall leave his mother and his father and be united to his wife and they will become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked. Mm. Mm -hmm. Adam and his wife, not Adam and his girlfriend, not Adam and his side piece, not Adam and his chick he met at the club <laughs> down at Deep Elm. Mm -hmm. Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. You don't got to be ashamed if you're married. Mm. Yes, sir. So to concise it, marriage, it is a religious thing because it has started from the beginning right. that God has brought Adam and Eve together and not Adam and Steve, just like what? You say, uh, come right. on. So because Adam of that, and Eve, mm -hmm, Adam and Eve, God has brought them together, man and woman, <laughs> and made them husband and wife. Right. Not exactly. uh, side. Okay, okay, I understand that. All right. Because, okay, I'm gonna ask you some questions on that in a little bit. But Ray, can you just give us just a gist on why you think marriage it's a religious institution? And I know that that is such a you know in depth question, but just kind of give me the gist on why you would think marriage is a religious institution? Well, we obviously have uh, marriage in the Bible, as uh, Kyler was kind of getting into. Um, it's literally in the beginning of the book. And so uh, marriage is a uh, physical, you know, emotional and spiritual thing. And I have this uh, Bible verse that I wanted to go ahead and get off. Really right. quick. So it's uh, Genesis 2.24. So he says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh so obviously we know that marriage is in the bible but marriage is the commitment to one another and growing closer towards god you know uh, shaping each other to become better people in this society and also you know um passing down our name through time through our through our children and stuff like that so um i feel like marriage is a very religious thing there are a lot of uh, religions that uh, view marriage they have a little bit, you know, tweaks and things, but they all come to the same, you know, resolution. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you live with me, you know, we, we built this together, kind of in a way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brilliant. I want to go ahead and give my reason why marriage is a religious institution. Put it simply, because God designed it. Because God created it. I really shouldn't have to explain any further, but unfortunately, now we have to go ahead and explain every word now in order for people to understand, especially our opposition who are totally dismissive against marriage. The reason why marriage, it is a religious thing, one, because God has created it. Now, if we follow the way that God has designed us to operate in marriage, marriage should not fail at all. Marriage should not fail at all. Because if we follow the steps and if we navigate properly, on choosing the right one, mm. our marriage is bound to last. Unfortunately, all of us today in society, we are viewing marriage just as simply, oh, hey, I like you, you like me. A few months down the line, we fall in love, and then we decide to get married, problems arise, and we get divorced. What? No, 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 no. You need to understand the origin of marriage. And to understand the origin of anything, this is our conclusion, that it must come from God. Mm. It must come from God. Anything that you want to participate in, you'll say, okay, where is this from? What exactly am I participating in? Especially when it comes to you living with a partner for the rest of your life. You're just simply going to go into it blindly without knowing where it started, of how it's supposed to be operated, and how you're supposed to properly navigate to find the right woman. Which brings us to another point. The arguments against marriage. Wow. So... Just as I said, we have to properly navigate our way into finding the right partner. And if we understand that marriage is a religious institution because it comes from God, right. then 
the question is, well, how do I properly navigate to finding the right person? Well, before we get into that, first things first, it kind of makes sense now that we have that foundation, right? That marriage is a religious institution and that there is a proper way to navigate to find our partner so that we may fall in love with them through God. Then a lot of the arguments that I'm seeing now is, well, I mean, you could, you know, you could find the right partner, but over 50% or at least 40 some percent of marriages are designed to fail. And then plus, how are you going to find a religious woman nowadays? A lot of women are promiscuous. You're proving our point. Then don't marry a religious, I mean, then don't marry a non-religious promiscuous woman. Right. That's one of the arguments that we're seeing nowadays, right? But before we get into that argument, we have a list of arguments that I would like um, right. for Kyler to go ahead and read the first one. Okay, so this right here, these arguments are created by the Shades creators, you know, little FaceTime call, little conversation, you know, put it all together. So we've got six arguments, um, the top arguments that we hear about against marriage. So the first one is the ice cream argument. Basically, this is saying that there are too many flavors you know we have too many variety of women you got tall short thick petite black white hispanic mexican latina you know asian all of these beautiful women out here you got blonde um brunette bbls you know? <laughs> natural you know we've got all of these beautiful ladies out here and it's so hard for us to choose just one god you made all of these beautiful women and you want me to sit down with one no so we have this argument that men are not wired to love one woman mm -hmm. so that's the ice cream flavor you know we got the butter pecan the vanilla the strawberry the chocolate you know okay all that type of let's thing. go ahead and attack that argument yeah because i've heard it from very popular youtube channels that we are biologically wired to uh, have a variety of women but the woman she is biologically wired to serve and she must understand that our roles are different so i can go out there and um have girlfriends but with her i truly do love her right it's just simply our role she's gonna have to accept it i am the high value man she's here to serve me and i serve her in my own way simple as that what's wrong with that you're not biologically wired to do that i am Mm. Okay. Now, are all of our biological instincts correct? Not at all. That no. question ends of its ends that argument itself. We as men are biologically wired, yes, to go ahead and plant our seed everywhere, but we as logical beings know that that is immoral. Mm. It's immoral, right? It's just kind of like, let's say, right, you have a wife, okay? Now, this is what's really being presented out there, and it gets me sick. You have a wife, and then you're going to go to have, or not even a wife, but you're going to have a partner, okay? You have kids with her, then you go ahead and just only come and show yourself to the family whenever it's um, appropriate, because you, know, you won't mm -hmm. have to deal with all of her nagging, all of this right. other stuff. And then so you have three other uh, different families. How do you think the kids are going to grow up thinking about you? All right. right. Exactly. That boy pulling a Nick Cannon. <laughs> Wilding out. Yeah, no, it's um, it's kind of ridiculous that um, a lot of people just, you know, think just because we are wired a certain way, that means we have to carry out and live right. that way for the rest of our life. There's multiple people that have grew up in the gutter and are now living the best life they ever have because they stay true to themselves and they realize that they had to improve and within themselves, within themselves, to get to that certain point of success. So honestly, with this argument, it it shows a lot of like non self control like what is mm -hmm. just just because i built myself up and went through all the trials and, and tribulations and stuff like that means i can be unfaithful mm. to i can lose my traditional values just mm. because i have more money now mm. that doesn't make sense at all mm -hmm. i don't mm -hmm. understand that it's very nasty wow. way. absolutely and then i'm starting to think as well to have that argument of we're biologically by our right to plant our seed or to spread our seed as they, they like to say one is just simply less that's all it is mm. one you've never truly been in love uh, again i know you know that's you know kind of like oh who hurt you you really never truly been in love it's the truth you've never been in love to be committed to one person because i kid you now whenever you mentally connect and truly fall in love with a person then no other woman on the face of this earth is going to be even you wouldn't even conceive of you wanting to spend time with her, much less having sex with her. 
So the point is this: you have not met a person who you can be truly committed to, because I would maybe say, perhaps say, you are consumed with lust. Right. That's lust. That's leading. Do you have anything on the ice cream argument? No. You want to go to the, the second second argument? second argument is the freedom argument. Right. Yes, sir. So this is the the freedom argument that we have. Obviously, it's pretty self explanatory. <laughs> um, a lot of people say you can't do anything in marriage. Uh, you basically have to share life. I don't understand what people really mean about you can't do anything. What you can't be nasty with other people. You can't go out <laughs> to clubs. Like I don't I don't understand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like what is the point in not wanting to be committed to someone for the rest of my life? Uh, right. Am I just gonna sleep around until I'm sixty years old? Like right. no girl is gonna be going for that, or no man is gonna be going for that. Right. You're obviously gonna reach your peak age, okay. and then you're gonna pass that, and um, you're gonna have nothing left. You're just gonna exactly. feel empty because you know you spent your early years, you know, worrying about the wrong things, worrying about your career and. And, um, well, from a woman's perspective, I guess, in a way, um, you worried about, you know, the wrong things and not, you know, the right things towards becoming a good wife or or husband. So I don't, I don't know what people mean about the the freedom. I guess it's just their excuse to want to be nasty. What do you mean by that? Right. 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 So a lot of them like, man, she tripping. She won't let me go out with my boys no more. It's been a minute. So me and my boys then went out to pop some bottles, you know, there's some stuff happening, you know, she want me to stay in the house. She talk about, I don't spend no time with her, you know, and so now these guys are afraid of marriage because they know that the two now become one. Mm, You see. And so now we are sharing a life together. Now we have to talk with each other you see when we were single we can just go out there and run the streets we can just do what we wanted to do we didn't have to answer to anybody but now you've got a wife and now she's concerned about you babe why aren't you at home at this certain time you know it's midnight you ain't answering your phone you know it's now that whole aspect of we having to communicate Mm -hmm. with somebody else and so now we don't want to we're we're so used to being in control that now we we're not used to living for someone else Mm -hmm. speaking of which it proves our foundation that marriage is a religious thing because from the beginning it says that whenever y'all do have sex right and that just means becoming as one then we'll go ahead and go into that shortly whenever y'all guys are married y'all guys are one and then a lot of people they do get divorced or they don't want to get divorced because they feel as though that they're going to lose their freedom well the bible talks about it saying yes you will become as one with your partner meaning Mm. you can't do whatever you want and the woman can't do whatever she wants because y'all guys are one further more proves that marriage is a religious institution come on now for the third point is um this one it's so apparent. I think this was probably the number one argument. It's getting ridiculous. Right. Ray yeah. is laughing about it. Kyle is laughing about it. It's laughable. It's laughable. It's it's called it's by the Shades podcast the debt slash despair argument. Mm. Right. The oh, do you have any change? Do you have any change? Meaning this. <laughs> Hey, um, you know, Ray, Kyler, I just, I just don't want to get married because I worked my um, self off so hard that, um, boss, I <laughs> worked so this hard in this life right. that I have so much assets, so much money that uh, why am I going to go to engage into a marriage where over 50% or whatever the number is, by the way, it's not 50%, it's like 40 something where it's destined to fail more than right. half the time why would i want to go ahead and engage in something where the woman is rewarded if she were to divorce me she's going to take all my money away all right that's the thing with the men is that now we're hearing these arguments that men don't want to get married and men should not get married because the man takes the financial and the family risk mm-hmm. um he loses he's the one to lose everything in the divorce the house all of his assets uh, everything that he's worked for half of the business you know he doesn't even get to see his children you know now he's in court he's having his custody battles you know and so it's a whole thing now you got to stay one weekend with daddy. <laughs> daddy daddy only see you every other weekend y'all got to split the holidays hold away what you mean she see you on christmas <laughs> so now it's a whole issue and so men are like man forget it forget it what's the purpose man what is the purpose of us doing this you know so they don't want to go through that because they feel like they'll let um divorce will lead them in debt or it will leave them in despair and so they don't want to take that um that whole risk you know because they're going into the marriage automatically thinking that is going to be fit that is going to fail they're viewing marriage as a contract 
mm. um, and a contract is based on mutual distrust. So we're already going into it wow. with the with the negative mindset. Wow. We're already going into it. Well, if you do this, if you do that, hey, just know right now you go sign this prenup. You know, I don't worked hard. I built this business from the ground up. You know, and so now we're going into it and we're viewing marriage as a um, as a contract versus as a covenant, mm. which right. is what God right. has always destined for it to be. Um, I feel like for this argument, um, like you said, I feel like a lot of people go into marriage with the wrong intentions as mm -hmm. well. Um, they're already going into it with a uh, negative mindset saying, well, dang, if this happens, if she divorces me, then I'm going to lose everything I ever worked for and all this stuff. So what is the overall point in you, you know, getting to that so-called status and, and building your finances up just just for yourself? You're not going to provide for anything right. at the end of the day. It's just all for you. It's, it's, it's fairly selfish that uh people are thinking that way and we're not saying that marriage is not risky at all we understand the risk of marriage and we understand that men usually get screwed over in court with you know with the custodies and all the assets and and all that different stuff but you know that's just the risk that we're going to have to bear and um if you like how ariel was saying earlier if you navigate marriage correctly there you go you shouldn't really have to worry about that at all i, I believe 20 to 25 percent of religious marriages end in divorce so that's significantly less than you know people that just marry for shallow reasons i think that the non-religious people right exactly mm. it's about like it was like 40 40 something oh yeah, percent like 40 something check percent. it check it <laughs> do your homework it's significant google lower. check my boy ariel <laughs> <laughs> significant ask lower than siri the other ones <laughs> yeah yeah Absolutely. and then ray speaking on what you said a lot of the men right out here who have been hurt and look look, 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 look we as christians as godly men do have sympathy for those who have been emotionally um, ruined because of divorce you truly thought she was the one um but then just uh, out of nowhere she just one day woke up and said you know what i'm done with you you know you're starting to gain weight whatever lame excuse she gave you brother mm. i am deeply deeply sorry i can't imagine i can't sorry. imagine that pain but ray as he said it bluntly you have unfortunately just chose the wrong wife. You did not navigate properly, which is what we are really trying to drive home point. Mm. We are trying to drive this point home. That is, you must navigate properly so that if you are on a date, okay, Kyler, I was going to say, let's pretend we're on a date. No. If I'm oh, on a date. Man and right? woman. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm on a date and if I ask her, hey, um, you know what? There is a way to go to navigate that properly, especially when it comes to money. And I've heard this before on the big YouTube channels who are who would be against it. They said that don't take her out first on such an exquisite, extravagant date. Take her out to somewhere, quote unquote, mediocre, somewhere humble, right? Take her out to your apartment or to your parents' house, wherever you're staying. Mickey at, D's. Right? Take her out somewhere <laughs> cool. Let's see how she is. And if she is all like, oh, you know, I thought you were gonna go ahead and take me out, you're done. You're right. done. The moment she starts to mention uh, money, the moment she starts to present herself as shallow, the moment she, if her vocabulary is just filled with shallowness and about money all the time and about how much she hates broke boys and about her experiences <laughs> with broke boys in the past, leave her, bro. You bro, can't bro, marry bro, her. Bro, bro, yeah, boy. she's talking you about it's a hot girl her. summer. Yes. <laughs> you need to be aware. That's one way. <laughs> Find out on whether or not if she's shallow when it comes to money or not, right? And women are evil like that. Yes, I do understand there are women who will get married to a man. We've seen it with Logan Paul, Logan brother. I don't mean to uh, uh, look down upon you, which we are not, just as an example. There are women who live the life and then they get married to a rich man. And then and then afterwards, they go ahead and get divorced Whoops. and they take a lot of his money. It happens. That is evil. But unfortunately, I would have to say it again. Ray, they did not navigate properly. So mm -hmm. the wrong wife. Right. The wrong and wife. the thing is, too, you can't ignore the red flags, which Ariel, mm -hmm. when you were talking about, um, she just decided to leave because, oh, you gain weight. This leads us to the fourth argument, which is the conditional love argument, mm. where we see um, the fact that a lot of people are arguing that women um, change on men and they fall out of love. I've heard people um, with these arguments that say that women only love men conditionally. They love men if he's doing this, if he's doing that, right, under certain but circumstances. yeah, under circumstances, but if you stop doing this, then the love is gone, which I believe it, it depends on that particular woman. But I also have seen women that have fallen in love with men based on their potential. 
as well. You see, you know yeah, that man. dude is no good, but you you believe he, his rap career go take off. Nah, he could be the next little baby. Nah, y'all just had a little baby. <laughs> He just got you pregnant, you know, so it's not, it's not happening for you. But it's it's that thing. It's like, um, it, it's so people, they, they, they don't understand that there are women, though, that do see men based on their potential. And they get hurt based on the fact because they believe this one, they had this one idea of what this man could be. But right. he never lived up to that. Maybe because he was lazy or he had no drive or motivation, you know, but that argument about, um, people falling out of love as well as another example that we see well it um it started one way but it ended another way and so people change and everything like that that's the argument um <clears throat> back to your uh, point with the uh, falling out of love mm -hmm. and all that stuff i feel like love is not necessarily an emotion it's kind of like a commitment to okay i'm doing my all to protect you you're doing your all to protect me and then we just grow together like that um, that's why my mom always used to, used to tell me no matter how mad uh, I get at you, how, how happy, how upset I am, I will always love you. It, it should never change at all. Right. It should never change at all because it, it's not an emotion. Right. It's just an act. It's a commitment. And, you know? and that's why merit is so sacred. Merit is so sacred. A lot of us are getting just married just off the whim. Oh, I love her. She loves me in Las Vegas. It's like that, right? People, they get married just for jokes. Right. Get, uh, get, get Elvis to marry you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people in Las Vegas, they really, and I've seen it, they have like a small little church where, you know, people, they fall in love for the night and they joke, hey, let's go ahead and get married. And then by that phrase, what stays, uh, what happens in Vegas. Yes, stays, stays in Vegas. Vegas. So that is true regarding that. So that's why imagine this imagine if you were find a woman right who says you know what i truly truly do love you of course there are conditions meaning not if you not if we go into debt because let's say one day the government stops our uh, cards from being accessed right which can happen um they i stop am, the stimulus i'm checks. still gonna go ahead and love you <laughs> if you're gonna go ahead and um get into a uh -huh. car wreck and you are in a wheelchair for months right. and uh, we are unable to engage in sexual activity i'm still gonna love you why because of who you are as a man of god because mm. we grow together right. in god's exactly. love right and so with that being said it gives me to another point that in order to love someone we must receive it from a source mm. it's like this I can't be angry just out of spite, right? I don't one day wake up with anger, right? There's always a source of why people have a certain emotion. How much more would it be then with the concept of love? We must receive it from the source and the only source that we can receive love from is God, right? And God's love is unconditional. So if you do meet a woman and let's say, right, she's just constantly talking about shallow stuff. Oh man, Ray, you know, you're so this and this and this, man, we would make uh, awesome uh, babies. You know, they would be tall. They would be this and this and this. Mm. You would kind of give her a side eye like, right. huh, why are you only talking about my appearances? I'm a godly man, right? this is the last and final day that we're, this is the first and final day that, that we're gonna be on, right? You find a woman who expresses what love is and love, it is not conditional. Love must be received from a source and that is from God. Okay. okay. Absolutely. Go ahead, can, Gather. Oh, let me add on that point that you said about love coming from a source. Um, the Bible tells us that God is love. So love is not something that God does. It's not just something that God does. Love, he was saying love um, is from God. Love is not something that God just does. Love is who God is, okay? And the Bible tells us in 1 John 4 and 8 that God is love. Now, also too, um, with what you were saying about conditional love when we are in marriage we make a vow we stand at the mm. altar before god and we make these vows and these vows is to we are speaking unconditional love to each other we are promising each other unconditional love till death do us part through through rich or poor through um health and sickness through good times through bad times we're promising to stay with each other through that time and in fact um because the Bible shows us that marriage is supposed to be a picture of God's relationship with us. So Ephesians 5 and 25 tells us, us husbands to love your wife as Christ loves the church. How did Christ love the church? Mm. He loved the church sacrificially. 
He gave up himself for the church. We are the church, the body of Christ. He died on the cross for our sins. He loved us unconditionally. The Bible says while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So God didn't wait for us to clean up our acts and then say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and die for you. The Bible says while we were sinners, before you even got the chance to sin, before you was doing the stanky leg and all of that, he, he died for you. And the Bible says that he gave himself up for us and this is what we have to do we have to love each other unconditionally but we cannot love each other unconditionally if we are not receiving our love from christ mm -hmm. because you have to receive grace in order mm -hmm. to give grace mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. once you receive grace and you realize man god you've been so kind to me you've been so generous you've been so patient with me i've messed up time and time again and god you've never changed on me you've always kept your hands on me you've always been good to me once we have that, we can give that grace to others and be like, you know what, babe, you had a bad day, but you know what? I'm going to stay with you through thick and, and thin. Absolutely. Which brings me to another point what Kyle was saying. I wonder why, just as Ray put it, non-religious marriages end up in divorce more than religious marriages. Perhaps because the religious people, they understand the concept of love. Point blank period. I guess we didn't understand that, man. Point blank period. So all the huge YouTube channels out there, you are engaging in a religious institution without understanding the basic principles of love, which gets me to First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse oh, four Come eight. on. It says, "Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It is not insists on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It is not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with truth." And here is the banger: Love bears all things, mm. believes all things, hopes all things, and endures Come on. all things love never ends i'm gonna say that one more time it endures all uh. things love never ends and how and then of course that is the question that our society is asking how on earth can my love never end because you are not with god neither is your partner y'all wow. are loving each other conditionally so for us to criticize the institution of marriage i would say it is absurd it is stupidity point blank period now, Kyler, you wanted to also talk about this um, next love is it is a piece of paper. Wow. So this right here is the <laughs> this is the one I've been waiting on. So this is number five. Um if you've been following us, we've so far have covered the the ice cream argument, the freedom argument, the debt slash despair argument, the conditional love argument, and then the fifth one is the piece of paper argument. What I hear a lot of people say is marriage changes absolutely nothing there is nothing that I, you can get from marriage that we cannot already receive from this relationship alone we're already living together we already you know doing the do you know you're already doing what we do so we might as well just keep it the way it is marriage all this is is just a piece of paper you know what and i'm tired of that argument because so is a diploma Mm, so is a degree so is your social security so is your birth certificate so is money so is a physical paycheck yeah we go and we chase a piece of paper we kill people pow, pow, over a piece of paper we go to school it's been so much time in school you're in your school for years working you got student debt because you're trying to get a piece of paper <laughs> that's what we're doing but we make we prioritize the paper that we're after mm. you see we want we want to get that paper you know I'm, I'm chasing the paper i'm trying to get the bad but, but the real paper that matters is this marriage <laughs> being with somebody that's going to be with you until the very end so that argument about marriage is a piece of paper and there's <clears throat> nothing that you can get from a normal um relationship it, it doesn't hold up because basically we we go after after what we want to go after All right um and to add to that there's definitely a difference between a long-term relationship and a marriage well one because i mean if me if if i had a girlfriend if me and this one girl if she decided to go ahead and leave of course there'll be some you know emotions that i'd be feeling but you know past that there'd be nothing i'd be losing besides i guess you know her and her company and, and all that other stuff but when you get married and some of divorces Obviously, we understand it goes through the legal system, but there's a penalty for the dude um, from from kids and, and assets and stuff. So there's definitely a difference between the two, because obviously there's more of a penalty for marriage because it is a commitment thing. It is a legal mm -hmm. thing that you guys mm -hmm. um, gave vows and, and uh, covenants to. So there's definitely a difference between the two. I hate how people say, 
well, if I know my girl's not going to leave or, you know, right. if I know she's just with me, then uh, there's no difference. There's, there's definitely a difference. Bro. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then I love how he said that word. Key word there, guys. Covenant. Covenant. Mm. And then I even think that it's better for the state to get involved. And that's one of the... Another argument, right, go within this, oh, why would I want the, the state to get yeah, involved? I don't want to include the government. Right. Yeah, I don't right. want the government in my marriage, right. bro. I would say that it's going to put pressure on both of us, a healthy pressure on both of us not to end it. And then two, I mean, this could be another critique that if marriages, um, because the state is involved uh, now, whenever they're divorced, we have to pay taxes because their kids are up against single mothers they're on food stamps right so taxpayers have to pay for that i don't want to go down that route but whenever people do divorce and the state is involved people have to pay for their failed marriage i'm sorry it is mm. what it is but by that being said i think it brings a healthy pressure upon the marriage whenever the state is involved and i wanted to touch on that too there seems as though and to me right we were talking about it at work it was that there isn't a lot of stigma whenever a failed marriages happen. Let's right. say you were to marry a right a woman, and then let's say I was a part of your um, immediate family. We are family in Christ, but I was a part of your immediate family, and that's oh, Kylie got divorced. Oh, oh man, damn. she was probably a yeah. this and this and this. So be it. I should be like. Whoa, what happened? Right. Kyler. Like it's gotten did, a lot too casual. Yeah, uh, did, casual. Yeah, yeah. did uh, you choose the wrong partner? Like, you know, what happened? Was uh, she mad at you because you um, gained some weight? Uh, uh, did she love you conditionally? Uh, did you navigate properly? Like, what happened, dude? This is insane. She broke a vow. You cannot end a marriage. It is a vow. And those of you who, you know, do, um, I would have to say that it's immoral. It's immoral that you broke the vow. You went into a covenant. That is the reason why Ray brilliantly said, well, there is a difference. Point, it's simple. There's a covenant involved. Well, the relationship, I can simply leave anytime I want to. And that also proves your insecurity to engage in something meaningful, purposeful, and beautiful. Okay, and then so Ray likes to cause this argument, the huzz argument, because uh, I think Sensor. if we, yeah, because yeah. if we uh, say the real thing, you know, you too. Ray knows more about that, but take it away, Ray. What is the huzz argument? So, um, to the beginning, when you had stated that um, a lot of people's arguments are simply, oh, we can't, um, yeah, 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 these, you know, marriage sounds good, but we can't really find any of these women, you know, where they at. Um, we're just too busy divorcing and stuff like that. We should just completely give up and quit. There's definitely religious women out there. We're not saying that it's not, you know, more of a rare situation to find it someone is. that is right with God, which, it, of course, it is uh, rare nowadays. But we feel like a lot of these dudes are, like Ariel said, you're just wifing the wrong girls. You're not navigating correctly at all. You're just, you know, wanting to get married for shallow reasons, uh, looks, money. Um, looks fade over time mm. um, Money mm -hmm. I, Oh I'm just with him for the money And then once he stops Once he gets in a hole I'm just gonna go ahead and leave him And stuff like that Like you have to navigate correctly In order for this to succeed Just like um, <clears throat> Back to what Ariel was saying um, It is a religious thing So you have to go in it With a understanding of what it is It's like going into right. uh, Real estate without knowing You know how to sell houses Like where, like, where do I start at Like that's such a of you know a big a big thing like real estate like you have to go in with prior knowledge you have to get a certification mm -hmm. in order to sell your first house and, and, it, and even might be a while until you actually sell your first house mm -hmm. so you have to go in it with some understanding and once you both go in with that understanding of marriage then it shouldn't fail at all mm -hmm. we're not saying that every marriage is going to end in roses of course but if that's the case then you simply chose the wrong wife now the hus argument there are even Guys, not all stats prove your point the way you probably think it does, right? There is this popular YouTube channel. Again, there is no drama, right? We do not battle flesh and blood, but we uh, battle higher principalities, rulers of this world. That's what the Shades podcast says. We aren't battling you. We don't. We just care about the idea that is controlling your life. The idea is that you set that is controlling your life. Okay. There are stats out there, right, that uh, the manosphere, right, the red pill people, they'll say, well, uh, to put some stats out there about why uh, your religious people are hard to find, which is clearly obvious now. I mean, I can go 30 minutes to deep element and clearly see that in broad daylight. Um, 
And that is, they say that Gen Z, they prioritize men in fifth place. Um, women nowadays, they've been promiscuous more than ever. So for you, Ariel, right, and Kyler, to tell me that I need to go out there and wife one of these girls up, it's wrong. We're not saying that. We're not, are not saying to wife of the modern woman, why on earth would you want to do that? Mm. Why on earth would you want to do that? So you have it misconstrued. You guys will say, no, no, no. We're just accepting the fact how women are nowadays. So therefore, we're going to go ahead and lower our righteousness right. and engage in uh, lustful activities, meaningless activities because of how the way women are nowadays. All right. Just because there's a little bit more hus on the block, means, which means I have to change my traditional values just, just because of you. No, mm. I don't have to follow you at all. Mm. I'm following God's way and what God wanted us to do. I'm not going to look towards your way at all. I'm turning the other way. I'm staying true to myself. Wow. Which brings me to this whole argument right here about we cannot be unequally yoked. Second Corinthians um, chapter six through 14 of uh, ch chapter six, verse 14 um, through 15 basically tells us this it tells us not to be unequally yoked with non-believers because what fellowship does light and darkness have with each other what fellowship does um christ have with evilness what fellowship does does believers have with non-believers we are not to be unequally yoked with each other we should not marry someone that we are not um uh, that, un we're, that we're not yoked with so what basically let me explain this to you we do not need to be with anybody that does not have the same views None. the morals and values Simple. that we have so i'm I'm, bas I'm basically breaking it down to you because i understand oh well what does equally yoked mean we don't use those words anyway don't don't get on someone like it's like a seesaw right don't get with somebody that, that's weighing you down you got it you guys have to be balanced you guys have mm -hmm. to be on the same mm -hmm. level it's, it's like you can't get with somebody and you're a christian and this person is a non-believer because if mm -hmm. that's the case then it's going to cause division from the beginning if we have kids together how are we going to raise our mm -hmm. children now you don't want your your kid coming to sunday school now you you want to bring your kids and now he playing soccer on sunday <laughs> we you normally do church but now the whole priorities are different what do we do with finances and now we have an issue because you keep giving the church your money you keep giving the church 10 percent. that's all the preacher wanted is the money and now we're arguing and fussing about this but if we're equally yoked if we have the same morals and values and we're both being led by the word of god then we're going to win because god is in the center of that relationship mm -hmm. a relationship without god is simply a relationship without god Amen. it's just that simple Amen. if god is not in the relationship it's not going to it's not going to work god has no hands on it he has no parts in it but if god is in it you go win now there are those people out there that said well i know your religious people who have gotten divorced let me say this they weren't operating in marriage correctly then they have broken something that god has given us instructions to do it correctly the religious people they were not religious whenever they divorced period it's that simple i am not a fighter if i do not wake up every morning and train every day we are not religious right in the regard that we got divorced that doesn't make any sense oh your religious people they got to me that phrase religious people getting divorced like what how are yeah, you you're religious right if you all, got okay. divorced i thought y'all guys were to under and then two i am starting to even doubt that they were your religious to begin in the first place perhaps they believe in god i mean there's non your religious people right meaning they don't attend to church every day but maybe they you believe in god but whenever people say oh i um no divorce uh uh i know divorce people who um divorce people divorce lawyers who deal with couples coming to me a lot saying yeah you know they were a religious couple but they got divorced well i would like to sit down with them and ask them hey what is love in terms of the bible what does the bible say about divorce and here's what we all say there are exceptions to divorce one of them and there's only two reasons if the man or the woman abuse each other physically and the other one is infidelity meaning cheating all the other ones right as we see stats on here i don't know if we have enough time uh to read them i could just go through i can skim it really quick okay yeah so um the stats that me and Eric looked at the other day so we have lack of commitment 
arguing too much, infidelity, which is one of the reasons why we should say, yes, go ahead and divorce. Uh, marry too young, unrealistic expectations, lack of equality, lack of preparation, and domestic abuse, and uh, you know, violence and all that good stuff. So two of these reasons on here are valid reasons on why you should get divorced. But the other ones, it just proves our point that people didn't navigate correctly mm. in the marriage from the first place. Mm -hmm. Lack of commitment, what is, what is that even supposed to mean? So, you know, I tried so hard, to, you know, to get you to be my girlfriend. And, you know, we're trying, we're trying, we're trying. And now I married you. And it's just like, no, now I'm just putting it off. I feel like when you're in marriage, you should try even harder because mm -hmm. that's that is a commitment you have to grow with each other you guys you know if one side's falling down and the other side's gonna fall down like you guys both have to be up at the same time you guys have to balance each other out so i don't really understand that that lack of commitment i don't understand why you would lax when you get married wow it doesn't make sense wow at all. Uh -huh, uh -huh. and then all the other reasons why they get married again they should be admonished from the get-go Right. There's an example. Uh, we don't mean to bring him up, but or let's say, right, Ray and Kyler, they're excellent debaters of which we will um, get into that area shortly. Let's say Kyler wants to argue with his wife, but if I say, hey, 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 no, 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 we've agreed from the get go that the moment we start to argue, you cannot get into your argumentative state. Right. You are using your debate tactic against me. Uh, um, you can't do that. I thought we we're just simply talking. You have to go ahead and mitigate whenever problems arise. You have to go in and say, hey, this is what we do whenever this happens. But if you were to get divorced because y'all guys argue too much, good. You don't deserve to be, you know what? I probably shouldn't say you don't no, deserve no, no, no. to be going, married. I would say that you have participated in a religious institution that you didn't even know that it was religious in the first place. You cannot give get divorced over petty reasons. And then I would read a lot on the YouTube comments. This gets my nerves so bad. Okay, so Ariel Ray Kyler, y'all guys expect me to go ahead and be with the man who uh, mentally abuses me all day? What what are what is, you what doing is, though? What is mentally abusing? Though? It's not is, all the time that he just wakes up right and um, mentally abuse it for no reason. No, no, there's a source of why he's doing that. Was it because you are constantly going out at night or with your girls? Whatever the reasons may be, there's a reason why he's doing it. But for your case, if he is mentally abusing you um, unjustly, well, I'm not saying there is a, 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 a um, good reason why one would mentally abuse you, but we have to know what does that mean mentally abuse right you have to go in and navigate that you really have to work things out because as the bible says love endures all things meaning work it out you have to work it out if you get divorced because things weren't going right because y'all guys disagree a lot of stuff then i would say hey perhaps the man chose the wrong partner and marriage and just as the god said and kylo said you have to be equally yoked and the only way to do that is both of y'all are in tune with god right you have to be on the same page so since we've gone on to these mm -hmm. arguments against marriage for the sake of time can we run through really quick the benefits of marriage mm -hmm. because i don't want us to talk about okay we've discussed the arguments but now we here at the shades we are for marriage every single one of us want to be married we want beautiful yeah, what are you talking about i didn't say i want to get married bro oh well he wants to um have freedom and just go around and have a uh, meaning yeah, with man, sex I, I sleep man, around all the time man. my man into marriage, that bro. polygamy <laughs> <laughs> you want multiple wives <laughs> but um uh, real quick we're going to go through the benefits of marriage i'm going to run down them real quick there's six benefits of marriage um and then we can elaborate on my okay. guess and final thoughts but number one is raising a family that is the first benefit of marriage is you get to raise a family and you get to establish a legacy um, we reproduce we have children um, now it, it is important for children to be in a two-parent home um, so that is one of those things when you're married it, it turns out a lot better um, number two is multiple streams of income um, with the, the way things are in this economy nowadays of course it is logical sense that two incomes right. are better than one um and then even the tax benefits you guys can file together third um reason and then you get a greater return <laughs> you know especially too when you write off the kids too <laughs> oh you're like oh man this looking good this year i can't wait for my tax and for return. those of you who say it's <laughs> minuscule uh -huh. you haven't struggled you right. have not struggled uh -huh. but yeah, now now y'all are going on trips and everything right. yeah. <laughs> got new shoes because of income check looking nice <laughs> but number three and then when it come with the stimulus oh my. 
<laughs> but number, the third thing is uh, you experience true love, which that is what every one of us wants is true love. God looked at Adam and he said, it's not good for the man to be alone. So I'm going to make him a helper for him. That is what we all crave on the inside is true love, finding that helpmate. The world talks so much about a soulmate. That's not, you won't find that in the Bible. The, what's in the Bible is a helpmate. You need somebody that's going to help you, that's going to be with you, and that's going to love you regardless. And that's the fourth thing, benefit of marriage is growing old with someone. You have a life partner to be with you through thick and thin. That's what those vows are about. And then the fifth thing is honorable sex. Mm. My let's take a little part. ball let's just take a little pause for that <laughs> honorable sex what do you mean because sex is reserved for marriage god made sex for marriage oh. did you know that god created sex which we're going to have our own yeah, episode that, about this but god created Wait, sex and really it quick, is for, uh -huh. does that why does that also explain why uh women who have lots of sexual partners before they get married they're most likely to end up in divorce uh, maybe oh, maybe wow maybe Damn. you see That's a good point, and so though. intimacy I never thought of it like that yeah and intimacy is reserved for marriage that's why when we read genesis 2 25 the bible says that the husband and the wife were naked and they were not ashamed there was no guilt involved with it because when you are doing it in the confines of marriage it has god's approval over it it's honorable sex because sex is um for marriage um and then the sixth reason which is the final reason that we've come up with of a benefit of marriage is that you increase in god's favor proverbs eighteen twenty two says this and this is one translation it says a man who finds a wife a man who finds a wife mm. you you will figure it out a man who finds a wife <laughs> finds a good thing and obtains favor from the lord and then another translation says a man's greatest treasure is his wife she is a gift from the lord but note this right here that it says that when a man finds a wife he finds a good thing let me elaborate on this point really quickly is this he finds he who finds a wife finds a good thing now notice that it doesn't say that a man that finds a woman and then makes her his wife finds a good thing right she's already a wife when he found her oh wow because mm. she's uh, already doing things to right. put towards that exactly wow. she's right. conducting herself right. as a wife now Darn. for those of you that are trying to take this out of context oh well i've got to go and find somebody that's already married oh is that what you're saying no that's covetousness and the bible tells us not to covet after another man's wife but it says this <laughs> that he who finds a wife finds a good thing she's already a wife How, why because she has those godly attributes Attributes. there you go she's conducting there herself as a woman and, yeah and then and then y'all get bad and criticize marriage but yet right. y'all guys are marrying women who are not wives right they haven't right. had it in their hearts and just like what Kyler said they don't conduct themselves as wives right. they are preparing themselves to be married to a man right and then of course we can get into another right. topic of what a man is but you put exactly. it beautifully and brilliantly that a woman is already a wife internally right and right. yet we are going to go ahead and criticize marriage as an institution what right, right. exactly all right uh, one thing that kind of annoys me is that you know we have these guys that have had you know divorces and stuff like that and or people that are not for marriage necessarily that's cool you know we're not bashing you at all you can stay over there with that but what irritates me is that you are inflicting all of this this bad right. all this bad things and stuff and, and telling these young men oh it's not worth it don't sign mm. a contract and all. Just, right. like keep that to yourself don't don't inflict <laughs> your own pain on other people just because of just because you didn't navigate correctly you personally because right. mm. you didn't understand what marriage was in the first place right. so you're gonna go ahead and, and poison all of these young men and then right. and, you know we're keeping they, they right. keep seeing this they keep seeing this and and maybe maybe their parents are, are even divorced you know so it's just like dang like right. my parents are divorced too and then i'm seeing this online like maybe it's true man like maybe i'll never get married Right. Like, come, come on now. Perfect, exactly. perfect. Quit it. And then those of you who do get divorced, you are also affecting your child's divorce um, chance also, exactly. right? Statistically, search it up. Check me on this. The children whose parents have been divorced, most likely they're also going to get divorced. And the parents uh, who child, uh, then the child whose parents weren't divorced 
Why? Because it's already implemented into their mind that, wow, if my parents, right, these angels got divorced, right, uh, what makes me think that marriage is a good institution right. at all? And then, and then they get married and then they start to have problems like man you know what it happened with my mom you with my dad it's a subconscious it's that thing trauma that affects. absolutely exactly right. and then going back to that point about when he finds a wife he finds a good thing uh, it takes a husband to recognize a wife mm. so you as a man if you are not conducting yourself as a husband then how are you going to know what to look for in a wife yourself you can, we're so focused now about finding the right person instead of becoming the right person right so this right what here are you doing this ring right here is not what makes you a wife what makes wow. that person a wife is her character her reputation not the ring you see the ring that's what we do at the wedding and everything but it's the thing that matters it's her heart it's how she is on the inside so when that man finds that wife he increases in god's favor doors start opening up for him when you're married opportunities and things start happening because god's blessing is over it even when you are with somebody long-term um committed relationship with somebody and you guys are not married but y'all are cohabitating y'all are fornicating y'all are doing all this stuff having sex y'all are y'all playing house with each right. other y'all got kids you right. got the dogs you got all this stuff but no um covenant under it there is no covering from mm -hmm. god over it mm -hmm. you're living in sin and when you are in sin you can't win mm. you can't win when there's sin so when god comes into the picture of it then things start falling into place and things become a lot better for really quickly you. right you were talking about uh the divorce rates on people who cohabitate than those who jump into it um immediately all right so it's basically just people just you know staying true to their traditional values like it doesn't make sense for you know us to go ahead and cohabitate with each other and then get married and then there's a you know higher what was the percentage it's like a higher percentage for people who cohabitate before a marriage and uh, i feel like a lot of people wait to get married a little bit too late you know because right. you know i'm having my my past situations and then i'm having mm -hmm. my past situations over there and then we're coming together and then and then i'm getting mad at you over something that my that my ex did and you're getting mad at me something at something that your ex did so we're just bringing in this it just never works it's just clashing you know so it's better to get um you know married young and uh staying to your you know traditional worlds uh, roles in order for the marriage to succeed which yeah. comes back to the point you have to navigate correctly correctly and then you can cohabitate which most likely will end in divorce and um but that's for another route we need to go ahead and wrap up because uh this is amazing i'm having too much fun i wish we can continue to talk but my final thoughts is you know what i have a lot to say i want to go ahead and jump on it um off of right kyler mm -hmm. do you have any final thoughts okay so this is my final thoughts and we're going to go ahead and wrap this up our merit we are this generation does not have a marriage issue we have a commitment issue mm. we don't want to commit this is a generation uh, full of quitters we start wow. stuff and we don't finish it we start it and we don't see it through i'm going to go to school but then halfway through the semester when it gets a little tough and rough we quit man this job man they not gonna talk to me any kind of way you know <laughs> y'all not gonna disrespect me just because you the manager you know and so as soon as they talk bad to us the management disrespects us we walk out um everything that happens to us every time there's a challenge in life instead of us rising above it we quit every single time and that's the problem with this generation is that we don't have a marriage um issue we have a commitment issue and the reason that we have and the way the re the fact that we have a commitment issue is the reason why we have a marriage issue we don't want to um go through marriage because we know that it's going to take work and we don't want it absolutely we want to just buy we just want to have the cow mm -hmm. you know <laughs> we want to drink the we want to drink the milk but we don't want to purchase the cow yep. in other words you want to you want to have you know you want to do the do but <laughs> but you don't want to you don't want to nah why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free basically yeah and then you know. to jump in on your point calendar a lot of people they have commitment issues because they are participating in sexual immorality mm -hmm. What further proves that in order to have a successful marriage, because I believe that this stat is, again, check me on it, um, people who have at least four bodies, 
right, for sex apart before marriage, they're likely to end up in divorce than mm. those who waited. Um, which, again, those who have commitment issues, it's because you're participating in sexual immorality and then your boyfriend is also participating in that as well and then you get hurt and then now you are dealing with this extreme trauma that you're saying, oh, no way, I'm going to go ahead and get married because men are this and this and this nowadays. Well, what is God saying about all this? To diminish that, to abolish that is stop having sexual immorality before sex so that you won't have that trauma that you are dealing with and that so you'll stop telling younger people to not get married because my wife divorced me. Okay, final thoughts, Ray? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I just don't like this overall uh, stigma of you know people telling others not to get married just because of their personal experiences and, and all this stuff and just because you know we don't have the necessary uh, leverage in court and all that good stuff that we shouldn't partake in it or just because it's a little bit more rare to find the the one in a way i don't think we should give up on what god wants us to seek We don't have the necessary uh, leverage in court and all that good stuff that we shouldn't partake in it or just because it's a little bit more rare to find the, the one in a way. I don't think we should give up on what God wants us to seek. Absolutely. We'll go ahead and end it there. Thank you guys for watching. Let's get married. <laughs> hey, Sparkhouse. That was beautiful, guys. Beautiful. That was amazing. Amazing. Uh, amazing. That was about like 40. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know.